Hey everybody, welcome to Board Online, Board Offline. Today we have a solo gameplay of Lands of Galzer. Now this is the latest game from the designer of Dawn of Peacemakers and Dale of Merchants, and it's gonna be coming to GameFound on August 3rd. Now, up front, I wanna tell you this is a paid video, so take all my opinions you hear in this video with a grain of salt. But that being said, it's no secret that I am a fan of the games that uh, this guy has made. Uh, I mean, Dale of Merchants is number, was number eight on my favorite games of all time, and Dawn of Peacemakers, I can't remember if it made it into the top 40 or not, but if not, it was very close to the top 40. So, you know, this, this is one that I have absolutely just had a blast playing, and it is a prototype, of course. It's not finished. Everything you see is subject to change. The main area you're going to see unfinished, uh, you, know, you know, not being finished in this video will be with the, the story itself. There's um, it's very much a narrative driven game. There's an app where you get all the story from. And I believe one time, I don't know if it's a part one or part two, but one time during this, uh, this video, you'll see where we click on a story to read it and the story is not there. It hasn't been finished yet. And that's a prototype thing, of course. So keep that in mind while we're watching. Now, uh, I do want to mention our sponsor, Board Game Co. This is a fantastic website where you can buy, sell, and trade games. If you're just looking to build out your collection, just trying to get more games in your collection, fill some holes, Board Game Co. can absolutely help you out. They have all kinds of games, a huge selection of games to choose from. And one of the ways they have such a huge selection of games is they have a thriving used game market over there. They uh, are, are willing to both sell and trade with uh, trade with you. So, or I should say, buy from you and trade with you. So you can sell games to them. You know, if you are trying to get rid of, say, I don't know, a dozen games, and you find a dozen different people to sell it to, well, you got to ship games to all those different places, or maybe meet up with a couple people, or whatever it is. Instead, you could just sell all twelve games to Board Game Co. Ship them one place. Makes it very easy. Uh, very easy system to use on their website for selling games, so be sure to check that out. And then, of course, trading games. If you have a Board Game Geek username and you've set up a trade list on Board Game Geek, you then go over to Board Game Co., drop your Board Game Geek username into their website. They compare your trade list with their stock and build a custom trade list right there on their website. It makes it very easy to use. I strongly recommend it. If you do check them out, click on the link in the description below so they know I sent you over there. Board Game Co. makes it easy to buy, sell, and trade your way into a better collection. All right, so let's get down to the table, and we're going to play Lands of Gowser. All right, so here we go. We've got Boomir, who is a marbled polecat. This is the character I'm, I've been playing as. Uh, he's got the explore and scent um, keywords. And then as far as skills go, you can see he's got two skills on survival, one skill on communication, and one on thievery. Now, the items he's got right now, you know, you can only have three at a time. So I have had other items throughout the game. These are the three that I've kind of settled on at the moment. And we've got a sledgehammer uh, worth eight gold, pole and weapon keywords, and a force skill check. It... Um, gives you two extra successes in fight i can convert two might and one communication oh, i'm sorry one perception uh, from my dice rolls into four successes then we've got the wanted poster wanted uh it's got uh, worth two gold it's actually me on there uh, this came from a story uh where i actually got captured because they thought they were looking for me. Honestly, I'm not sure if they were or not. I mean, it does say Boomer on there. I convinced them I was not the right person. And they let me go and handed me the wanna poster on the way out the door. Um, shady is the key word that comes with that. Only Boomer can use this card, obviously. Uh, in a situation where I'm trying to intimidate somebody, I can get two successes and then roll the 12-sided die. On a one to two, I place 115 from the library on the notice board. So I'm curious what that would be. You can see it looks like, yeah, it looks like that's going to be a 115 that only would apply to me. It only would apply to this character. Uh, and then in fight, I can reroll up to two dice. Then we've got the ocarina over here worth six. It's got a music keyword. 
If I'm trying to recall something, reroll up to four dice or convince someone, reroll up to two dice. These are my current quests that I have. Uh, Smoldering Wood, part one. Um, Karimia's Vacation, part four. And Growing Pains, part one. So the one I'm actually trying to complete right now and will complete here at the beginning of the game is Karimia's Vacation Part 4. This is Karimia, by the way. I have been uh, transporting them all over the board in an effort to help them have this vacation. They've been getting me into all kinds of situations. Obviously, I completed Part 1 through 3, and now we're at Part 4. Uh, I hope to end my little vacation at the Serenity of Yezden's Temples. When gained, take 280. That's just in case somehow you gained this without having Crimea in your uh, as one of your companions. If you leave the spaces below or Crimea is not with you, you uh, you abandon the quest. And you can see right here, it actually has a little map. So we were coming from uh, Serwar and we're heading to Yezden right now. And I'll show you that on the map here in a second. Once we're in Yazdan, we can visit the temples and we'll open up this story event right here in the digital storybook. And then this down here just tells you if you chose to get rid of the card, you'd return to AD the library and then place this on the notice board. So smoldering wood, I'm not going to go through the whole flavor text yet since we're not actually focusing on it. We'll, we will do it here in a second. Um, at some point, I'm sure we'll get to it, but... Uh, you can see this one, well, especially because this one actually is also in Yezden. So yeah, you know what? Let's go and read this one. So Smoldering Wood. Yovan, my employer, owns a large... Hold on. Yovan, my employer, owns a large sawmill. A lynx named Hilemo is currently in prison for an attempt at burning it down. We believe uh, Janka a previous co-owner of the saw, to be behind the arson plan. Please find evidence to support our presumptions. Jaunka's firm is the logical place to start. Adrosia, the snowy owl secretary. All right, so we will definitely do that as well while we're in Yezden. And then this one down here, uh, Growing Pains needs to, uh, I need to go to the one space south of Maratu to do that one. Oh, I forgot. Bumir, by the way, has this unyielding spirit. Vermeer's legendary resilience has inspired not only many polecat cubs, but even some story writers. Most of those fables have more truth to them than one might first think. In a might or survival skill check, you may discard to reset the check and perform it again, and also gain one success for the check. Uh, so you have to discard it, but you can see this somewhere right here means when you're saving the game, also just technically at the end of the game, uh, you would take that card back from the library. So uh, essentially, it's a once per game skill. And then, so we've got Karimia up here, who's one of my companions. Jafim is my other one. With Karimia, has, she has the, I'm pretty sure that's a she. I'm trying to remember. I feel like, no, his. Through his biting. Okay. Uh, Karimia's success in trade stems from his befriending ability, though. His biting affection is as cute as it is painful. The toxic and nibbler keywords in uh, communication skill checks. I do get one automatic success for having Karimia with me. Every two days, I'm going to have to roll a D12 while Karimia is with me. If I get above a six, nothing happens. But if I get a one through six, something bad happens. So I got to keep that in mind. And... Uh, this right here, I'll show you how this works. This basically, you can see there's a two there. So that's how I keep track of the two days. I have a matching token over here on the board and we'll sh I'll show you that in just a second. Then we've got Jafim, who is an advisor. While his company makes you uneasy, Jafim's wisdom can't be ignored. In knowledge, yeah, knowledge skill checks, I get one automatic success. And if I go to... Um, Reinch tomb. I can then follow his advice and do that story of it. So he's only with us for five days. So we'll probably head down to Reinch tomb after we leave Yazdan. All right. So here's the board right now. You can see uh, we have these two cards over here. This card is just the card you have always in a cooperative or solo game. Uh, it shows that since I'm playing solo, I have 12 rounds. That's what 
this guy right here is showing. So you go and find this on the board down here and 12 rounds is right here because I'm starting uh, the first day of the of the week that you start on is always randomized. So it was randomly selected as Thursday this time. And then we have the month April. Uh, the way we got the month was the first game, the month was randomized. And then, so since then, we've gone one month at a time. <clears throat> Excuse me. One month at a time. Basically, every game is a month. Um, I started February, so this is my third time playing it. And you can see at the end of the game, I'll replace it with card 005, which will be May. Uh, spring is in full swing. And everywhere you look, there's flowers blooming and birds chirping. Farmers get to work to plant the first seeds of a successful harvest. It tells us to use the summer side of both the game board and the location cards. So this is the summer side. Eventually, you know, probably when we get down into, I guess, maybe August, September, somewhere, uh, probably later than that. I'm not sure exactly. At some point, we'll flip it back to the winter side of the board. When I was in February, it was the winter side of the board. And, uh, and then you can see the cards. Also, the location cards have a winter side. So, obviously, you've got the different locations, and then you've got the cards that make up the locations. And, and the only thing I can figure is that by doing this, you run the possibility of being able to actually significantly change what these locations look like. Uh, also, but you can then change the available quests or, or you know things that you can do events i believe events that's what i'm trying to say the events that are on the locations as well so those would be the reasons why instead of just having the location on the board you actually have cards for the locations so like i said we're starting on thursday so you can see here this is the token that uh links up to uh karimia over there so when we get to here we'll have to do Karimia's uh, where we roll the d12 and see what happens. This one is linked up with Jafim. So I've got to here and then Jafim is actually going to leave me. So we'll have to be sure to resolve his thing. Out on the board, you can see we've got these quest tokens. Those are showing me where new quests are available to pick up uh, on the notice board right now. And then up here, we've got my prestige. The most prestige I've earned in a single player game was six. Uh, which seemed like that was considered, it said at the end of the game that I was well known. And so it seemed like that was a, a pretty good thing to have that much uh, prestige. The first game, uh, I only earned two and, and it, it told me that I was not known at all. And obviously one of the, you know, if, if prestige is the thing you're trying to earn, then you're looking to be uh, well known. So I'm, I'm curious, you know, how much better it'd be to be even higher than six. We'll see what we can do this game. So I will be starting up here at Yezden. There's my character right there. All right. And uh, yeah, I think that's pretty much... Oh, let me show you. So real quick, the dice. So with a skill check, uh, let's say we were doing a um, survival skill check, the yellow over there, right? I've got two, two, I've got two markers in my yellow skill and my survival skill. These are all the basic dice. There's five basic dice. When you do a skill check, you start with the five basic dice, right? Well, now I've got two yellow die or two yellow skill markers, so I can take two dice out and replace them with two yellow dice. And so these dice are going to have uh, two sides with two successes for survival. So that really increases my chances. Whereas the basic dice have one symbol of each different skill on each side all right so this will have two sides that have two um survival successes and then the other sides you can see next to survival is knowledge and might and so you've got two sides with one knowledge success and two sides with one uh, might success all right so that's pretty straightforward. But now let's say instead I was doing a knowledge check, which is the green over there. I've got two yellow skills and one blue skill, right? So again, so again, you pick up your five uh, common dice, your five regular skills here, uh, skill dice here. And first, you know what? Next to knowledge, you can always use, basically you can use any dice you want to, but the only ones that are gonna help are the, the skill that you have and the skills next to it can help a little bit too. So I'm gonna take these two dice out and I'm gonna put 
these yellow dice back in. Why is that? Because whereas this will have one knowledge check, remember I'm doing a knowledge skill check now, it has one knowledge uh, success on it. These have two knowledge success on it because they are a, uh, that skill is right next to knowledge. Survival is right next to knowledge. So I've increased my possibilities of rolling knowledge. And then I'll add a communication die in there too because I have one for the communication. And while, yeah, it's primarily good for getting communication successes, see those there, it also will have two knowledge successes on it as well. And so then I would roll and, and, and see what I got. All right, so here we are. We're going to get started here now. I need to show you first, of course, this is the Lands of Galzer map or map app. Um, and when you start a new game, you're going to click the month that you're currently in. Obviously, we're in April. Now, it's going to randomly assign a day. Um, obviously, I, when I set it up before, when I set the whole map up, I already ran through this once, and it randomly selected Thursday. So we'll go ahead and just move over to Thursday. All right, and so you can see it goes ahead and tells, even though you know everything else out here has told me the same thing. It's April, use the summer side of both the game board and location cards, okay? And so we've got this started now. We can choose a new scene, which let's take a look here at... Karimia's Vacation. All right, so this is one of our quests. Obviously, we need to be in Yezden. That's what this box here tells us. We need to be in Yezden to complete it. We are in Yezden. We're going to visit the temples. We need to choose scene 0051. So we go here. And keep in mind, of course, everything you see here is prototype, including the app itself. It's possible that when we go into the app that we may run across some scenes that are not completed yet. That's entirely possible. I've run uh, so far. Again, I've played twice before this. I have run into one scene where it just straight up had not been completed it told me hey you got to pick something else all right so that's possible while we're running through here it's also possible that uh the scenes that we see here may be changed later yes yeah, so that's possible so keep all that in mind while we go through it actually real quick before we do anything else you can see there's a new version let me update real quick so you can see it's that easy when uh okay so it's updated start a new game again go to april thursday all right choose a new scene Again, 0051 is what we need for our quest. So scroll through. All right, 0051. At the temples in Yezden, you meet a group of tourists being organized by Lin, a cloaked Bobak marmot, and a temple guardian. They are now they are partaking in one of the well-known wayfarings that travel across the slopes, seeking enlightenment through mountaineering. Before starting, Lynn gives out advice in spiritual searching and practical safety and tells the group that she is going to get a guide for them. Oh, me, 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 Karimia begs, bouncing up and down, waving his hands in the air. I have always wanted to lead one of these. Lynn clarifies she uh, Lynn clarifies she more so had one of the other trained marmot monks in mind. Karimia looks at you for help, not wanting to be just another tourist in the group. Not counting Karimia, do you have a partner or at least one companion? So remember, we have Karimia. We also have Jafim or Jafim, Jafin, Jafim. Okay. So not counting Karimia, do you have at least, do you have a partner or at least one companion? Yes. You have other folk here traveling with you that can vouch for Karimia's abilities. If you convince each partner and companion, not counting Karimia, uh, Okay, if I convince, so in the bold there, that's a verb, right? Uh, that's what the game actually refers to verbs that you'll be using. Um, for instance, you know, as when I was showing you on the cards here, I'm not sure if I used the word before, but so force is a verb that you might encounter. And if you're using that verb in the scene, you can use this ability to get two successes. So in this case... If you convince, meaning I choose this option to convince here, each partner and companion, not counting Karimia, gives you one success. All right, so you can see if I convince Lynn of Karimia's abilities, this is going to be a hard communication check. A uh, hard check is going to require at least three successes to be successful. Um, a medium check requires two. Uh, 
easy check requires one success. There are also, so you can see here, a medium knowledge check to recall uh, your wayfaring knowledge. Um, there are also checks that have an unknown that, that are, you know, would say unknown uh, communication, uh, in which case you, you just straight up would not know how many successes you need. So what I'm thinking is we have one uh, skill marker in communication. So I think we'll actually take our shot because we have one guarantee success already in Jeff Feem. Uh, and then we got a really good shot of getting two more successes with that skill marker. So I think we're going to go for the hard check. All right. So that's the one we'll go with. All right. So now we've got to roll our dice. So again, you always start with your five basic dice and then you look at your skill markers. In this case, we have one communication. So we will replace one, we'll replace one of those with the communication uh, color. And so you remember if we end up rolling one of that, that side or where's the other on that side, then we'll have two communication successes right there. And each of these black, <coughs> excuse me, each of these black dice also has a communication success symbol. So let's see what we get. Uh, well, we got one here. All right, so that means we have two successes because Jeff Eames giving us one, but that's really not gonna be enough. We know it's a hard check. We need at least, we need at least three. So first off, now this ocarina can help us out here, but we also get to, anytime you're doing a skill check, you can one time re-roll all your dice. So we're gonna do that. Oh, here we go. All right, so we've got three, four with Jafim. Now, we know we've succeeded because we have at least three successes. You can always do better, or not always, but many checks will have even better results. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and use this ability here on the Ocarina because you can see it says, if you're trying to convince, you can re-roll up to two dice. So we're gonna leave these three alone, obviously, but we'll re-roll these two. Nothing, okay. So, but we get four. All right, so let's reveal the outcomes. So you can see what, anytime you're doing this, and most of the time it's gonna be obvious, you start on the left side and move your way across, and the first one that is uh, that matches what you've got, you click on it, okay? Uh, occasionally, uh, you know, even though we were rolling communication maybe there was there's an option where if you had gotten two uh you know these two knowledge successes it might have given you that option and you just wouldn't have known it until after you'd rolled everything all right so so let's see here uh we got four we have four and you can see if we had five then we could have gotten something a little better but we click here all right Karimia whispers some high praises about him. Uh, Karimia whispers some high praises about him to you that you regurgitate to Lynn. She is resistant to your reasoning, but you, pers <clears throat> but you persist and continue to tell her how amazing the Gia monster is. She struggles for a moment, seemingly filled with preemptive regret. All right, she sighs. The lizard can lead. I just hope he is as good as you say he is. Karimia promises the group that he is their guide and that they are about to embark on the greatest wayfaring ever held. Looks of concern are traded by the other tourists who give Karimia only the thinnest of reassurances that they trust him. You even overhear one of them mutter something about how none of us will make it. Oh boy. With such a lack of confidence, both Karimia and you seem to be contaminated by their doubts and no longer are confident about your prospects. Trying not to alarm the others, the Gia monster leans in close to you. So, uh, how should we do this? Oh boy. All right. So I've got two hard checks here, either survival or, uh, uh, is that observation? Hold on. Perception. Perception is what it's called. Uh, well, we're definitely here. Let's go back. So I have two skill markers in survival. So we're definitely going with survival. All right. So we'll take. We'll have three regular dice and two survival dice. So we're going to explore with the group and I don't believe I have anything else here that'll help with that. Now my unyielding spirit will if we have to use that, but again, that's a once per game thing. So here we go. 
Oh my gosh, terrible rolls. All right, let's one more time. So we got two, three. All right, so we got the minimum. I don't think we're not, it's not worth burning Unyielding Spirit when we are going to pass. So we'll stick with that. And by the way, I shouldn't have picked up these dice because, again, you never know when some of the other stuff might matter. Uh, so I got to not do that. I just have a habit of clearing everything out whenever I play a game where, you know, dice success rolls are involved. All right, so explore with the group. Uh, we got three successes. While not the most direct route through the mountains, you take the group through safe paths and expose them to astounding sights across the region. Karimia seems to be enjoying the scenic route more than anyone else. As the trail begins to head down the mountain, a fork in the path is presented to you and Karimia. To you and Karimia halts the group. Well, everyone, this has been a stupendous vacation, but I have to go back home now. You all have been wonderful. Have you all have a wonderful time for the rest of your trip? The group looks confused. This is not good. Expecting that the lizard was going to guide them the entire way. Instead, he goes down one of the paths and waves you all goodbye. Expectantly and restlessly, the group looks to you for guidance. Okay, so first off, I gain two prestige. So two prestige. All right, return Karimia's vacation uh, from the adventurer to the library. So this card goes back in the library. And then return Karimia from the adventure to the library, which of course means her time tokens are gone as well. If I had a partner here, they'd gain pre two prestige as well. Take 171 from the library and place it next to the game board. Okay, so this is a global card, Wayfaring. You're leading your group through the mountains with indestructible, with indes <laughs> indestructible, indescribable beauty. If there are no figures on this card, then discard it. Figure on this card. Uh, we'll have to do this scene to lead the group. All right, so we'll place this. Place the adventurer's figure and possible partner's figure on 171. Take card 263 from the library and place it to the back of the quest slot. Okay, so for most of this video, I'm obviously going to keep this box off the, uh, the, the video and everything, but you can see here's how things are organized in here uh, in groups of 50. All right, and what did that say? It said take card 263 all right which is a quest and we're gonna put it in the back so this right here is the quest location uh so besides it we have 0 50 100 150 200 250 300 and then you've got uh these spots back here which are i can't this i can't remember exactly what that is called hold on i'll look that up in a second then you have the different characters and then back here you have global cards but so this goes in the back of the quests, right there. Ah. And this is the vault, is what that is. So any cards that are there are considered to be in the vault. Okay, and that's the end of the scene. All right, so we uh, are basically, we're gonna end our day here. There you go. And we'll move on to the next day. So at the end of the day, which happens at the end of everyone's turn. So normally if you play multiplayer, everybody would go. Then this just moves to Friday. Click it on here as well. And then you start a new day. And that's, that's all there is to that. Okay, let's get moving. So we're going to choose a new scene. And obviously we're going to go with the scene right here. Lead your group. Now, we actually have to use this scene. It's a mandatory scene. That lightning bolt means it is mandatory. Uh, scene 27 right here all right do you have the does the adventurer have a partner no i don't have the meaning a player partner no i don't you lead the group of wayfarers through the breathtaking but steep mountain landscape after hiking for a few hours some of your fellow wayfarers begin to complain about being tired either of walking or in general we were promised expansion of consciousness and the knowledge of the universe, not sore feet, yells one of the polecat, yells one polecat traveler. A tired platypus joins the, the demand. I'm not taking another step until we rest. You could either try, uh, you could either try to arrange a meditation session for the weary travelers or try to find a more efficient hiking path while they take a break. Do you have the literature tag? Uh, no, nothing that I have. No literature tag, all right? 
So we'll click no. We can observe the surroundings as a medium perception check or recall meditation teachings as a medium knowledge check. All right, so I think what I'm gonna do is the knowledge check and that's because while perception, I do have both thievery and communication that can help with perception. Uh, both of those only have one skill marker, whereas for knowledge, I have two skill markers for survival and one for communication. So I will actually, let's see, we have, we'll have two regular dice, two survival dice, and one communication die. And let's go for that. So we're trying to observe the surroundings for an, op I'm sorry, no, no. Recall meditation teachings is what we're doing here. So we have one, two knowledge successes here. Now we're trying to recall uh, this right here. We can reroll up to four dice. So I'm going to use the ocarina. And I'm going to reroll these three dice. Because remember, medium means we've already got a success because we only need two successes for to, to pass the, the, the check here. Uh, did not get anything with those. Anything else for recall? No. Okay, so we'll stick with those two successes. So two successes. The serene mountain landscape in your calming words seem to revitalize the wayfarers, lifting their spirits. Some of them exclaim that if the rest of the journey is like this, it will be worth every sore muscle. You and the group continue traveling with newfound vigor. Explore the mountains and lead the group. Medium, medium uh, survival check. So I won't have the communication die for this. It's gonna be three, three regular and two survival. And again, medium. So we're looking for two successes here. Oh, and we got it. Here we go. Oh yeah, look at this. We have five successes. Do we have anything else to help with explore? No. Okay, that's that's good though. We got five. That's probably gonna get us to the top. Yes, it is right there. Four plus. Okay. An experienced explorer like you has no trouble with difficult terrain or tired wayfaring groups, or even with both of them combined. You pick the easiest route that still has some attractions to be seen, such as the deposit of volcanic rock from the volcano Durgir near Chabar. At the end of the journey, all of the travelers, travelers express their gratitude, telling you that they will never forget this trip. A platypus among them signs a letter for you, telling that you have their backing for making sure they had an enjoyable trip. You gain one prestige. So one prestige puts us at three. Choose a space within one of Yezdin or Chabar and move your figure there. Um, well, you know what? We have a quest we can pick up in Yezdin, so we will put the figure there. One space from Yezdin. Give 215 from the library to the adventurer. Favor of populace. So it has the populace keyword here. Uh, general population has more power than they realize, keeping the establishment's gears turning like a well-oiled machine. Refusing to do so, that's what gets the attention. Being backed by the common folk can have the most peculiar perks. If invoked, we'll discard it. All right. I know I keep using the word keyword. Technically, these are called tags in this game. And this is a status card, and an adventurer can have any number of status cards. So basically, I hold on to this till it gets discarded. Uh, you can see, you can see Unyielding Spirit is also a status card. All right, and that's the end of the scene. So we move to Saturday. We got a discard wayfaring. So it just goes back to its spot in the box. Okay, so Jafim wants to get to Rashtun, which Rashtum or Rhinestum, which is this city here. I've got one, two, three turns. When this gets lands on top of his token, uh, his card instructs me to discard him. Okay, so I definitely want to start making my way this way. I also want to run through Yezdin. So here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna go one because we can move two spaces on our turn unless we have modifiers. 
While moving, you're also allowed to pick up quests. So this is the one that's currently on the notice board. You can see you pick it up in Yezden. Moving between cities in Galzer is a pain, not to mention how badly my back aches after a bumpy ride in a lowly wagon. I have a solution to all this. Only a simple career service is needed to complete my plan. Uh, Alamai the Dodo. So now that we have picked this quest up, we can look at this side and you can see we're gonna, oh, look at this, this is perfect. We're gonna need to complete it in Reinchentum. Uh, now, I will say we do have this quest that needs to be completed in Yezden. Uh, however, because it's not, that one's not really on a timer, okay? Even if we don't complete it this game, we still have it to come back to. But Jafim is on a timer. We're going to lose Jafim and without seeing what you know he has to offer us if we don't get down to Reinchtum before Tuesday. All right, so now that quest is gone, right? So we pick this up. We immediately pull the top quest from the slot in the from the quest slot in the box. So remember, we added a quest before. That quest is in the back. All right, so this is not the one we added before. That's way in the back. It'll be the last one currently pulled out. Uh, this is the one on top, Arheen, which is all the way down here. So we put that quest token there, and this goes up on the notice board, and then. He moves on. We move on out of the city this way. We're going to work our way down here. Because remember, we can move two spaces. We'll move from here to here and then to here. All right. Now, you can see we're in a mountain space. We are ending our turn outside of the city. Nothing that we have on us right now will trigger a scene where we're at, which means we draw an event card. Okay. Flip it over. And you just work your way down. See if any of these connect all right so it wednesday well no it is saturday so that one is not are we in a settlement no we're not because by the way so settlements have all these scenes that you could do uh, on your own but you also could draw a card if you just wanted to if you if none of that looked like it was interesting to you then you could draw a card if you're in a settlement uh grassland nope forest nope hill nope mountain there we go that's what the one we're doing zero zero six six Walking down a trail that cuts through the mountains, a bear steps out from the tree line and waves to you. She introduces herself as Herta and starts talking without giving you an inch to get a word in. Folks of old use, used to hibernate through the winter. I'm going to see if we can still do it. I'll need someone to get food, enough to last the winter. Folks in ancient times lived off the land and didn't buy food from the market. Want to help me gather some? If you search, each scent tag gives you... One success, and guess what? Boomer just happens to have a scent tag as part of just who he is. All right, so we already have one success. I believe that's the only, yes, only scent tag we have. So we can do a easy perception check to search for berries or a medium survival check to climb a tree and gather honey. Well, I think let's go for the medium check because we are, I mean, we're outfitted for survival, right? So that's what we're doing. And it's climb. I don't have anything else that will help me with climb. All right, here we go. Remember, we already have one success. Oh, no. We did not get anything. So we will reroll. So remember, you can reroll once. Well, we got one there, so that's that's two successes. But I'll be perfectly honest. Uh, uh, I mean, we are passing it. Do I want to burn unyielding spirit when we are passing? No, probably not. I guess I should just accept that. I don't particularly like it, but we'll it will accept it. So we got two successes. While searching, a hum of buzzing draws your attention to a hive above your head up in the branches of an oak. With grunts of effort, you shimmy up the tree and snag the hive, sliding back down before the bees can sting you. Is that honey? Heard of voraciously inquires when you return to her. Honey is my favorite and your reward. When we return to nature, we will have no need of such possessions. You take her, you take her worldly good as payment. So we get three gold, all right? So you can see we already have seven. We're now at 10.
we give card 22 from the library to the adventurer, okay? The speaking trumpet has a loud tag. A metal funnel is a great way to increase the volume of your message or use it to hear the other party's message more clearly. We use it to convince or observe. The problem is we'd have to get rid of what we have, one of what we have. You know, I, I just, so I do have these two things that can be used for fighting. I don't really necessarily need that. But if I take this, then I would have two things for convincing and I don't necessarily need that. I think, I, I don't think, I think I'm just going to discard the speaking trumpet. And then we return the event, the drone event to the bottom of the event deck. All right, but that is the end of our scene. So we move to Sunday. And new day. All right, so we will go ahead and move one, two. So all three of these cards are all the same space. All right, anytime you have a... A settlement that's all the same space. Also, by the way, you can see the settlement is a settlement. It's also the grasslands and also water. What, what, what's the technical term for that in this game? A pier. It's also a pier. All right. So now we're here. And we're definitely going to, we've been working so hard to get Jafim over here. So we're definitely going to do scene 0187. Oh, okay. Well, okay. So it is it is here. But you saw that warning there. So this scene may, it, it's a work in progress. Oh, no, right here. Unfortunately, uh, so here, see, here we go. Unfortunately, this scene hasn't been created yet. Please pick another one. All right. So in that case, that's too bad. We'll go ahead and uh, discard Jafim because... We, you know, we tried to do the scene. I don't know what it would have done for us. We'll just go ahead and get rid of it. That's just part of having the prototype, y'all. So, so instead, though, while we're here, we'll go ahead and do this one. High Hopes, part one. So this could be a multi, or this will probably be a multi-part thing, which is kind of like how the uh, the one with the other companion, um, that we, where we're doing Wayfaring, that was, what, part four or something like that? So... I got an idea from this large basket I found for cheap. Strap on a fabric bag along with a burner, and we have a vehicle capable of transporting, transporting folk from city to city. There are suitable burners in Reinstum. Drop by the bank and take a small loan on my name before meeting the seller, and we're all set. Olamai the Dodo Entrepreneur. All right, so we got to visit the bank 0201. I don't know. It's Sunday. Is the bank going to be open? You arrive at the head office of the prime Rhinian bank. The starting item on Olamide's agenda is to secure a loan to help build a new flying vehicle, which requires a powerful burner and a large sum of money for it to work. You head inside and wait in a gruesomely long line till it is your turn to speak to the turn clerk. What can I help you with today? You explain that you are here to take a loan out in Olamide's name. The clerk laughs, knowing who you were talking about. I'm afraid Olamide has borrowed the maximum amount of money he's entitled to at this time. He can only access new funds by making payments on the current debts. What will you do to secure the loan? Do you have a populist tag? Well, look what I just happen to have. There we go. We have the populist tag from, from the favor of populists, all right? Uh, yes. Yes, we do. Okay, you could call upon the favor of others to help convince the banker to relent to give you a loan for Olamide. So we can invoke the favor of populace, which would end up getting rid of this because it says if invoked, discard. Um, or we could convince the clerk to lend the money with a medium communications check. Wow, my mind is blanked. Or I could sign uh, a check for eight gold. Well, you know what? We've got the favor of the populace. Let's use it. You take out the letter of favor and pass it to the turn clerk, telling her that you have folk who would be willing to vouch for Olamide's honest intentions to repay his loans once he finishes and reaps the rewards from his latest project. She looks at the note only half convinced, but peers over, but peers over you to the growing lineup. Fine, we will we will 
approval one final loan to Olamide, but you should inform him that he has a lot of debt to clear. She gives you the loan. Leaving the bank, you head to the tinkerer's shop that the dodo told you about. Arriving there, you see the shop is little more than a yard of oxidizing scrap and skeletons of broken inventions. Can I help you find anything? The grizzled giant squirrel owner asks. You tell him about the engine you want. He shows you two cheaper ones, which, which one is leaking and the other is dented to oblivion. He has a brand new one as well that is not far out of your price range. Hmm. So we could patch the leaking engine, but that's a hard thievery check. We could force the other engine into shape, which is a medium. That's a medium fighting ch or um, might check, which I could pull that off, or I could purchase the pristine engine for four gold. I have ten gold. Let's hold on to our gold. Let's try to force the other engine into shape, because uh, unyielding spirit also works for might checks. All right, so so might is gonna we're gonna have two. Survival, you see might right here, survival on this side, thievery on this side. Uh, so we'll have two survival, one thievery, which means we'll have two common dice. So we only got one might success there. Oh, but wait, force, right? We automatically get two successes from the sledgehammer with force. So I forgot about that. So we actually have automatically succeeded at this. So you know what, let's reroll all this. See if we can get a little bit better. Oh, that's worse. But we have two successes right here. So we're good. After paying for the engine with a check, you wrestle with the engine like it is a living thing and bend its parts roughly into the shape that they should be. After that, you slap the engine around some more just to make sure your new adjustments will stay in the shape you force them into. The store owner takes a deep distressed breath. It is not what I would have done to fix it, but hey, if you want to wail on it, you can. He looks on in amazement when you turn the engine on and it works better than it did before. That's right. You tell him it's ready to be shipped and he promises to send it right away to Olamide and that it should reach him soon enough. The squirrel thanks you for your business. Gain two prestige. Return High Hopes 136 from the adventure to the library. So High Hopes goes back. And they give 122 from the library to the adventurer. All right, here we go. High Hopes part two. So this one we need to go to Yezden. Go, oh, go right back up to Yesden. Oh, which is good um, because we have this other one that needs to be done. Remember, we have um, smoldering wood that needs to be done up in Yesden as well. Uh, the balloon is completed with a fancy burner and all. It, the balloon is completed with a fancy burner and all. It just didn't occur to Olamide how hard it is to pilot the craft. Based on Olamide's trusty source, a skilled pilot lives in Yesden named Philokia. He recommends starting the search from the local postal office. They should know about her current whereabouts. All right, so that's, we'll definitely head up there and try that out. All right, but that is the end of our scene, of course. And we move down to Monday. All right, so there you go. That is Lands of Gowser. That is our first part. We'll have the second part coming up here very soon. Uh, probably will actually publish shortly after it goes live. Uh, Lands of Gowser, like I said, will be going live on Game Found on August 3rd. So be sure to check them out. As soon as a link is available, that will be in the description below as well. So until next time, if you're bored online, board offline.